Hey, what's going on, my friends? It's Dave Sharp. Welcome to Wake Up Legendary. And we have yet another amazing guest, as usual, here. Uh, we are so happy and proud of all of you uh, who are inside of this community because, well, you're the ones who we feature on the show, <laughs> you know, uh, which which I love. You know, there's uh, so many podcasts out there, so many shows that have, uh, you know, a guru uh, interviewing a guru, you know, and it's like, man, uh, I'm gurued out. I don't know about you, um, but I like to listen to people who are getting started. I like to listen to uh, people who are going through, you know, ordinary challenges uh, because it's relatable. How are they starting things in their life? How are they starting over? How are they starting new things? And Ashley this morning is an art educator who's uh, using and leveraging the transferable skills that we teach here at Legendary Marketer to market multiple businesses uh, from you know helping her boyfriend in his art business to her own business. Um, and I'm just uh, so excited to talk to her and kick this week off with another amazing guest. Ashley, welcome to the show. Thank you, Dave. Yeah, yeah, you are so welcome. Where are you calling in from? I'm in uh, San Jose, California, so South Bay. Okay, opposed yes. to North, is that North Bay, South I, Bay? Thing? I mean, people are very uh, particular about being from the Bay Area. And so yeah. if you're not in San Francisco, you kind of have to specify. And if you know, you know. <laughs> it's a California thing, okay? <laughs> kind of is. It's a big state. It's a big state. Yeah, people are okay. proud. No, I hear you. I hear you. If you're not from the Bay, you need to spe you need to specify your Bay, okay? You you do. Specify yeah. your bay. Don't just bay it up. Okay? You got to represent. Yeah. Okay, yeah. <laughs> well, I'm just from the good old state of Florida. Okay. Nice. We're just kind of all just, you know, we're just all kind of just here, you know. A just, nice, we, warm, melting pot. You've heard of us before. We're, I have. We're, we're the wild yes. ones. <laughs> yes. Um, so what led you to wanting to learn about the skills to grow an online business or or the online marketing skills that we teach here? What compelled you to want to seek out or learn these skills? Um, well, it was actually, so I am an arts educator. I actually bring music in visual arts and uh, dance and theater into schools that maybe don't have access to that through a nonprofit organization. It's a very fulfilling um, job that I have, but as you can imagine in the Bay Area, working for a nonprofit as an artist and also my boyfriend being an artist, it's not easy. You know, it is, it is hard. It's hard, but we love what we do. Um, and so I was actually in the process of looking into going back to school to get my credentials, to finish up my degree. And um, <laughs> I went all the way so close to doing it, but then the $70,000 price tag was just, not a not an option for me. Um, I have a son who's in middle school, and I have to send him to college. You know, one day and soon. <laughs> not like, not like it's not far away. So I wouldn't want to take any opportunities away from him to get into a career that may or may not even pay me <laughs> that much money back. So mm -hmm. I was kind of stuck. I was feeling like, well, I know that people are making money online and they're monetizing these platforms and you know, my boyfriend, who's an artist, he's actually been really successful on Instagram selling his art. And, you know, over the years, the algorithms have changed and we've noticed a difference. We've noticed some changes. And when I saw a video of a mom who was talking about making money online through affiliate marketing and just even the video itself, I just remember it wasn't like it was a huge production. I mean, I, the, the screen was even blurry. Like it was, a, it was a blurry screen and it was just her story. And her story, I think, you know, she also had ailments, she was paying medical bills and I was really moved by it. It was a very simple, short story. And she was like, I was able to supplement my income starting this business. And so I thought, well, let me just check it out. And lo and behold, I see, you know, legendary and I, I immediately w gravitated to your story um and i thought i could do this and very quickly i realized not only can i do this 
and start my own business online, I can implement these skills into my boyfriend's business and really hopefully help him as well. Yeah, I love that. And the, you know, the starving artist is a very well-known, um, you know, description of, uh, you know, people who are uh, into the arts as their career uh, in, in any way, shape or form, and uh, who also have a hard time supporting themselves, <laughs> you know, and, yes. <laughs> and, and it's, it's sad, uh, especially when you're a teacher, or you're somebody who is uh, working with, you know, the youth or in schools or something like that. Um, but uh, it applies across the board to both artists who are selling their art in the street, you know, in the streets, yeah. uh, in in studios, uh, and uh, teaching art in schools. And so, you know, this is sort of like the story of the nurse, the story of the the teacher, the story of you know some of these professions in our country who are the best of what America has to offer, and they are having a hard time supporting themselves. Not to mention the, wow, the price tag of going yeah. back to school. I mean, you know, did you all hear that, my friends? I mean, so often we are, um, you know, we kick and scream and we call scam and we call, you know, oh my gosh, I, I, I can't believe they're charging for this um, to online courses and course creators and people who are trying to deliver education on the internet. At, at a at a at a reasonable but fair price, and well, okay, no problem. G go to university, go go to go to college, go knock on those doors, go see what the alternatives are. It's it's the same beat, drum that I beat in terms of well, if starting an online business is expensive to you, go go start a, a traditional business, go go look into that. I mean, at least understand what the alternatives are because I know for me. Starting a construction company, well, I needed a truck. And that alone, that alone was a hundred, if not, you know, hundreds of the t of times the cost of what I needed to, to start an online business with a few low to no cost tools. Um, the education is optional, friends. I mean, if, if you want to get education to start an online business to you know, get some guidance, have some shortcuts, that's optional, but the core business requires a few low to no cost tools. But again, my construction business, I, I needed, I needed tools. I needed insurance. I needed license. I needed, you know, gas in my truck. You know, I needed all the things, uh, you know, shirts. You can't just walk up in a t-shirt to somebody's house. You, you got to have a dadgum shirt with your logo on it. I mean, they're, they're, so a lot of times we don't consider the alternatives to what we see online. And, I, you know, as much as I hate that for you, because to stack a degree on top of what you're already doing is seems like a, a rational option, you know, to just be able to grow your income through more education, um, another degree, which unfortunately is how society sort of qualifies us to earn more money. Um, that's a whole nother rabbit hole. <laughs> so when you found us, what, what were the light bulbs that went off? I mean, as you started going through our challenge, what did you see that you like? What stood out to you? Well, I'm the education itself, I felt like already out the gate, there was a lot of hand holding, and I think I'm a person who I need someone to hold my hand. And as much I I realize I am an entrepreneur, and I didn't really know that about myself until going through your course. And I thought, oh well, I actually have only had two regular jobs. All the other ones I kind of paved out for myself. And so everything that you spoke about and spoke to really resonated with me. But I think mostly what's the mindset aspect that you incorporate in your education. I mean, the education is so there, the copyright, the system setups, like all of the things that you need to know, the, the fundamentals to make it work are there in just the 15 days. But also you're, you're giving everyone a little bit of a dose of reality throughout, sprinkled throughout where, you know, no one's going to do this for you and you have to have the right mindset to go into it and you have to change your mindset. Um, and I knew 
when I did this, I started it in during our Christmas break. So as educators, we get this nice little Christmas break. And so I did the 15 challenge during that time. And I took all of January to get set up and launched in February, um, which January and February, like the craziest time of year for me, I was actually working overtime. And I thought, what the heck am I doing? But if I could do it, if I could do it this time of the year, like when I'm just so strapped with all of my, you know, jobs and things I have to take care of, even at, and as a mom, then I can do, I can do this. And so I think starting when I was as busy as I was really demanded that I wake up at five and change my, my schedules. When I wake up, just do my workout for my body. And then also, do the education and just start chipping away at this business and um, leaving and putting quitting off the table completely. Like I wasn't even going to consider that. I'm, I want to go through that. I mean, I went into this giving myself just at least a year to get it off the ground. So um, I just, again, like the, the most, what I appreciated the most was just how much support there was just from the jump in the community the Facebook alone, like Wake Up Legendary, I, I come every morning, I'm on here listening and thank you to all of the people who've come before me because they have taught me so much. Just, you know, the course on top of it, it's like a never ending education um, that I have, you know, I can tap into. And again, comparing that to what I was gonna do, which was spend 70, take out a $70,000 loan to go back to school so that I could do that online because I am, I have a full-time job. I'm a mom. I couldn't just start taking night classes on top of that, which maybe would have reduced it a little bit, but no, for me, I was like, this is a no brainer. Like too many people on here are saying the same thing and getting results. It works. So yeah. <laughs> well, that's awesome. And these are the skills that, that really, I believe, should be taught in uh in in university in high school even i was uh i i got reached out to by uh, a quite prestigious uh, university here in florida to come in and share and and teach and um i decided not to because i thought well you know no this is you know, I'm not going to come and share my the information that I sell for hundreds or, a, you know, a couple thousand dollars for like unlimited support and, you know, curriculum that we update yeah. uh, for free for our students whenever we update it and two coaching calls a day for uh, a university uh, who is going to charge $70,000 yeah. for a degree, you know, for people in, 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 in offer. I mean, the, the stories that I've heard about people going through university are horror stories. I mean, um, especially online classes. And, and again, this is just a, a bit of experience from a few people. It's not, it's not the general consensus. Um, but it's, it's, uh, it's disorganized. It's, uh, you know, you've got people who are there who are turning in work that they didn't even do. Um, you know, that they had somebody else do just to just to get through the class, just to pass uh, people creating drama, you know, uh, um, uh, professors who are not engaged, who are not paying attention, who are don't have life experience with the things that they're teaching. I think that university has become a cash grab. We've, we see a lot of online universities who are popping up now. And uh, there's nothing, you know, there's 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 all these opportunities for these schools to just kind of charge, you know, amazing amounts of money um, and, and just deliver their content online. Uh, and so, you know, it's it's uh, it, it, it uh, you know, here I, I, I'm not trying to bash it. I know you're not either. We're just sharing experience. Um, sharing real life experience. That's what the show is, is about is, is sharing real life experience and, and, and listening to each other and understanding what the alternatives are, you know, because this is hard. You have to choose your heart. You know, it's not like this is going to be easy. This is not easy. It's just choose your heart, you mm -hmm. know, and, and understand what you're, this is all that I've ever wished for 
for our youth in terms of education and in sort of coming up through high school and getting options. It's like, let's let let's let's normalize letting young people know that there's options and that the only path isn't to go into college and take out $70,000 in unforgivable debt um, at the age of 18. You know, let's normalize talking about that. Let's normalize not grooming our, 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 our juveniles, our, our young adults, and even our, our young preteens to go to university before they even are old enough to make a decision before their brain is fully developed. I mean, it's, it's, it's biological. Your brain is not, um, you know, fully developed to your mid twenties, uh, men later than women, <laughs> you know, admittedly, you know, so, you, you know, we're not equipped to make huge financial decisions about the rest of our lives at 18, which is when we're forced to, you know, oftentimes presented with that decision as well as all the credit card offers start slamming into our mailbox. Ooh, free money. So now I got student loans, free money. I got credit cards, free money. That's what I think at 18, free money. Yes. And then I realize, oh, shoot, that's not, that, that wasn't free. I'm actually going to be paying this off for like decades now. Still paying it off. I mean, School. I went to school. I got my degree. I, I got a degree. I'm not using it. Um, there's a lot of pressure, just to your point. There's a lot of pressure for young adults, 17, 18, who are just not sure, but they're corralled into making a choice uh, because that's the right thing to do. And I just think it's changing and it's a quiet change because no one wants to admit that there's something wrong with our higher education. Um, no, I don't want to admit it. I, I education. I mean, I'm an educator, so it's hard to even to to talk about that and say it in that way because you know it does need to change. But what's so great about this is that it could it can it's so malleable to whatever it is you do, like whatever creative outlet you have. I'm a music teacher. You know, my boyfriend's an artist. All of the skills that we learn here. We can make in, we can make into a business, and that's what I I hope anyone who's listening hears is like whatever you're passionate about. This isn't just like you go to school, you know, and you 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 go for a certain you know you go to school and you learn one thing, and then that's kind of what you have to do. But like with this, it's like no, you could be a business owner and you can be an artist, and both can be happening in tandem, and you can be very successful with both. Whereas you know. As an artist, sometimes we're missing that business education. Yeah. And that's kind of what I found here too, is like, wow, I could do so much. I mean, gosh, I have so many ideas, Dave. Like I still have so many ideas, but right now I'm still learning. <laughs> and I wanna like, I wanna get this down and I'm seeing the milestones that I'm hitting. Like I'm hitting milestones, I'm like, whoa, that worked. Now I know how to apply that to this idea down the road once I'm ready, right? Yeah. And I think that you're right about not just artists, but also about a lot of uh, professions that aren't business and marketing geared are medical. I've got a lot of uh, uh, physician friends, um, just buddies that I've met and become friends with over the over the years. And they don't have they don't have business and marketing knowledge and expertise. They don't have time. I got a friend that's a that's a cardiac surgeon, heart surgeon. This guy doesn't have time to yeah. be learning marketing and business and be focused on that. I mean, he's smart. He's intelligent enough to get it. And he's he's good. He's practiced. So he's got some opportunities. But he's a CMO. He's mm -hmm. just a chief medical officer, not a mm -hmm. chief marketing officer. Right. And um and so let's talk a little bit about how have you uh, helped your your boyfriend with his art business? Could you, uh, I saw that come through also in the questions. People are wondering, um, yes. how, how have you used some of these transferable skills to help him? And, and what has, you know, what sort of results or what sort of momentum are you experiencing now as a result of that? Or is he experiencing? Thank you. Yeah. So we're in the early stages of this. And the reason for that is I wanted to make sure that this works before I started to, you know, try to convince him of anything. And 
he is very successful in his own right. And so I think he also needed to see that this was something that was working, that we're seeing results. So within my own business, I'm seeing results. And he's like, whoa, okay, that's working for you. And, you know, kind of just implementing small automations that have been taught to me through taking this education, creating sales funnels, collecting emails. The ideas are there and we're slowly implementing them. But right now it's really um, it like video content, reels, how you are um, gaining followers nowadays. Like that kind of education is kind of what I'm, I'm talking to him about because at the end of the day, this is his business and you know he can take whatever it is that I'm doing and apply it in his own unique way. For his business and so i think like reels reels are a big deal posting three times a day i know it's so annoying and it and it's and it's hard but it gets results and like eight second reels with just they, they they get pushed out to people who aren't following you and so i'm seeing that actually working and for him at getting other people to see his artwork that's something that i would love for him too is just you know widening the net also you know, just getting the sales funnel situation in and how does that work? Creating an email campaign. They'll be the first ones to know about his art shows. Like these are all my ideas. Like he's leaving for work right now. So he's like, uh huh. But um, yeah, like that's, that's, those are all the, I like, I'm like, oh gosh, they could get VIP access to this and this. And like, they'll be the first ones to see these deals. And like, oh my gosh, once you have the, like, I have all these ideas and I'm trying not, I don't want to overwhelm him with what I know can be very helpful down yeah. the road. So um, I, I am still in the learning stages and implementing what I've learned so that then we can put it in his business and he can apply those different skills. But yeah, it's really about getting those emails too. It, it is, it is. And I think with artists, it's about creating exclusive opportunities mm -hmm. to be able to get the the art you know one of the things that i've learned a lot about unique pieces and yeah. high-end items art uh luxury items watches jewelry uh those all kind yeah. of fall in the you know unless you're mass producing art which it doesn't sound like he's doing oh, he is he, he also is doing that <laughs> he, he paints every single day and he produces a piece of work well when i say metal Okay, when I say yeah. mass producing, I I mean like oh, yeah. like prints, like yeah. Okay, so he's everything he's doing is is kind of with his own hands, literally. Like, okay, so that's 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 the most exclusive type right. of product that somebody could could offer, right? Is something that you're creating with your own hands, and ideally, if you're creating it with your own hands, whether it's a watch. Right. And you're and you're putting all the pieces together. And, and this is a this is a you know, this is an actual example. There's mm -hmm. some companies that mass produce their pieces. They machine their pieces. Yes. They just a machine puts them together and they spit out millions of pieces a year. And then there's other companies who hand make their watches, hand finish yeah. them, hand put them together. And, and they are always, you know, b polish every component right. inside of the watch, have an open case back that you can see the, the components and the gears and everything. Mm -hmm. Those watches, you're talking about 50, 100, 150,000, $200,000. Right. Uh, and, it, and it doesn't do anything more than your iPhone does, but it's, it's the, because there's so few of them, there's a supply and a demand element because more people want them than can be supplied. And so the supply, simple supply and demand is how products sell and also how price is determined. And that's one of the things that we have to remember if we want to get into uh, some sort of high end handmade or luxury item, art, watches, and even one-on-one -on -one coaching this applies to selling information as well because if you're doing or if you're doing group coaching and you're only taking a certain amount of people if there's more people who want it mm -hmm. then then spots that you have or pieces or 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 uh pieces yeah pieces jewelry art whatever if there's more demand than there is supply 
that raises the price. You saw it happen in the in the pandemic and the lockdowns and so forth when there was a limited supply of supply chain. So what happened? Prices of cars went up. Prices of houses went up. Right. Nobody was selling their houses because rates, COVID, all the things. So prices went up because more people wanted than were selling. Same with cars, et cetera. This simple concept of supply and demand is important to remember. And it's uh, something we can use to our advantage, right? So how do we do this? Exactly like you're, like you're saying, we build an email list. We build an audience to where we're showcasing our pieces on social media through reels, et cetera, uh, uh, you know, through um, pictures, posts, building that audience, generating those leads. Get on my waiting list or opt in for you know, exclusive behind the scenes photos and videos of how I'm actually creating this art. Right. Mm -hmm. So now you've got people on your waiting list. You've got people on your email list. And when a new piece becomes available, guess what? That email list gets access to, 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 um, you know, to apply for mm -hmm. that piece, apply, right? Yeah. So now all of a sudden you start to sell a few pieces. You've got people who are in, you know, demanding this R, but you've only got a certain supply. And now all of a sudden you start raising your prices. Why? Not because you're gouging the market, but because you only have so much of it and you have so many people who want it. So supply and demand raise the prices. This is how watches, luxury items, that have no more material or 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 precious metal uh, value than maybe another watch, but because it was handmade and because there's more of a demand for it, might go for double the price. Yeah. It's not double the material; it's double the value in the buyer's eyes because there's such a demand for it. This is the simple concept, and this is not talked about a lot because it's so simple it gets overlooked by some of the more trendy, hot, exciting topics, but supply and demand is what drives pricing mm -hmm. in the marketplace. And if we can use that to our advantage in totally ethical ways, by the way, totally ethical ways, um, we can really make more money without needing to sell more products. And I think that's mm -hmm. one of the things probably important to your boyfriend is that he probably doesn't want to mass create, meaning that, you know, take a photo and then just sell prints of it, right? He may need to do that and sell a certain quantity of prints. Sometimes you can do a, 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 um, a, a, uh, like 20, 20 yeah. prints you might sell as well as the original, which of course is going to go for it, you know, much more, yes. but, you get artists, the best place to be as an artist is the same as a high-end Swiss watchmaker. Mm -hmm. You want to get into that high-end supply and demand game where there is a, and you have to create that demand through marketing. Marketing. Ding, ding, ding. <laughs> that's it. That's yeah. exactly, that's exactly, exactly right. And I think I mean, he has the prints and he has the shop, he has apparel and it's all amazing, beautiful quality products. And then he has the originals, like your high ticket, right? Yeah. Um, and it's really just about marketing for him at this point and getting leads and getting people to see because the product is so valuable. And, um, you know, leads or lead magnets. Um, we've talked about, we're, do, we're gonna do, coming up pretty soon, we're gonna do a, um, a free giveaway for apparel. And one of, you know, pick, if you sign up now, you know, comment, call to action, comment paint down below, and you're going to automatically enroll in the contest. And then we're going to pick someone and you're going to get to pick any shirt, any sweater, whatever it is from, you know, his store. And not only are, is that going to drive people to his store, but we're going to be collecting emails in that process and getting them on a campaign that's only going to help them because they're already loyal followers of his. They already want to see his work. And I think that's the thing too, is just um, helping his helping his mindset. Like you're not going to overshare. People aren't going to get tired of seeing it. And I think that's something that even for me starting, I'm like, geez, three times a day, I'm going to post. People aren't going to want to hear what I, but they're not seeing it. I mean, really you guys, like they are maybe seeing one or two of your videos and it could be a couple weeks from now or, um, and I'm still getting likes on videos that I posted a month ago. And 
Um, it's just, that's not how the algorithm works. You know, they're not just putting it in front of everyone every time you post it. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's, it's been so eye opening and I'm, I'm doing, I'm implementing everything that I've learned here and I'm getting the ideas for his business, writing them down and, and, you know, kind of handing them to him to do with what he thinks is right for his business, you know? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. For sure. And, you know, again, uh, you know, as what's appropriate for one business uh, may not be appropriate for the other in terms of speed, in terms of, uh, you know, um, you know, getting things off the ground. And sometimes, you know, with spouses, we tend to, I saw a couple of other comments in the comments, you know, we, 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 we learn something and then we want to apply it to everybody around us. And it's about, you know, what you're doing, which I think is very smart, working on your own marketing, learning the skills yourself, having it take off. Uh, then people start to ask you, people start to get interested. You know, I, I, I've always said that one of the the best ways to get your spouse's support is to get results. <laughs> you know, um, your spouse will pay attention when, when, uh, you know, extra money or, you know, extra attention is coming in. It's like, Whoa, what, hold on a second. What, where, where did that come from? And it's like, w tell me about that now versus when you're trying to convince them before you've really got started. Uh, and, this is also the concept of attraction rather than promotion. I learned this in recovery. I got uh, clean 15 years ago and, you know, got into 12 step groups and learned about the 12 steps, the 12 traditions. One of the traditions is that, you know, you share the message through attraction rather than promotion with people because uh, somewhere along the way, many decades ago, the founders of, of the 12 step programs, um, saw and probably did them did this themselves as soon as they got clean and sober started running around and trying to convince everybody and save the world and and it's like well that 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 doesn't really work just because you woke up one day and decided that you were going to get sober now it's time for everybody else to get sober too and then you start want you know try to shove things down people's throats you know you see this with religion and other things people are having spiritual awakenings and now all of a sudden they think it's time for everybody else to have a spiritual mm -hmm. awakening and it's like, that's not the best way to advertise. The best way to advertise a lot of times is through attraction rather than promotion. And this works specifically with friends and, and family, people that you want to help. Well, mm. just go do it. Just go get results. And that will be more attractive than you trying to promote it down their throat. Mm -hmm. uh, and, um, and, and, and so, you know, uh, I've done that for the past 15 years and it's been real helpful. You become the hunted rather than the hunter uh, in, in all respects. So talk to us about what has been some of the challenges for you of getting going. I mean, was it weird for you to get on camera? You're a pretty much an in-person classroom style person, teacher. Uh, was it the, you know, was it the mindset? Um, what, 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 let's kind of take the pieces one at a time and we'll go through a few of them here. Let's start with the mindset. You mentioned the mindset training and some of the things we address. What, what limiting beliefs did you start bumping up against as you were going through the training and, and what did you notice that you were going to need to address if you wanted to be able to move forward? Yeah. So I think everyone goes through imposter syndrome at first where you just don't feel like you're good enough to do this. And I think that's why Wake Up Legendary was so helpful for me because I could see myself and a lot of the people who came on your show and they're just so real and they're so vulnerable and they're like, you know, I'm learning and, and at the same time I'm still doing it and I'm doing it scared and I'm, I'm pivoting and I do something and it doesn't work. And so I think for me, it was being vulnerable and you know, completely switching because I, you know, not I'm a music educator, but I also wrote my own album and <laughs> produced my own album. Like I did all of that. So it's a whole identity shift for me. So I had a different, you know, public profile and now I'm going into something completely, completely different, which I'm also really passionate about. And I find it fascinating. And I love, I love the niche that I'm in because I, I learn something all the time and I, I, I find it really fun. Um, I think COVID really prepared me for speaking to a camera because I had to teach through a camera and I didn't have students to really talk to. So I was, 
I was like, oh, I kind of, I kind of know how to do this actually. And I didn't realize I had been um, trained to do it. So that part has actually been really fun for me. Um, but the mindset is just getting past the self judgment and being okay. Like, Hey, it's okay to shift gears. Like you don't have to just have an identity that is your be all end all for the rest of your life. And um, while I'll always be involved in music, like I'm not going to keep myself pigeonholed into something that isn't, you know, what I want to keep doing necessarily. And I, I want to do uh, marketing and I find this like so, so fascinating, just all of the inner workings, like all the question marks on how this actually works for people being answered is, it just keeps me going. It just keeps me going because, um, I, I'm a learner. I want to keep learning. And then being able to continue educating others, I get to fill that that part of myself that is an educator. So, um, mm. yeah, I hope that answers your question. So much, so much. I, I, uh, I, I love that. And I love that you realize that you actually had some of the skills that you need and it wasn't as big and scary and difficult as you thought it was going to be. And you know, I think that until you try something, you don't know what your potential is or how capable you actually are. I mean, it, it, I told this story the other day. I think it's appropriate now. I have a toddler son who will look at something on his plate and say, I don't like that. And it's like, well, did you try it? <laughs> No, he didn't. You know, he just looked at it. And it and, and I think we do that as adults as well. We look at something and we say, I'm not good at that. Mm -hmm. Right. Or that's scary. Mm -hmm. Right. And it's like, have you tried it? <laughs> you know, have you have you actually done a few up like like by a few? I mean, like 10 or 20 or like actually 30 you know, I mean, think about an athlete, think about anybody doing anything. Do you think you get good and in, in love it? Like in the first like thousand swings, you know, no, like, I mean, if you're going to go learn golf, you're going to stink at first and, and you're going to be uncomfortable. It's, I mean, you might throw your back out. I mean, you know, it, but you got it. But eventually you get good. And, and then it's like you love it. Like you love things that you're good at. Right. We don't like things that we're not good at. So we don't do them. We don't even start new stuff because it's like I'm not good at that. I just like to do what I'm good at or, or I like to do what I'm comfortable in. Yeah. And it's like, well, OK, well, you don't get new things then. <laughs> this yeah. is why you can't have nice things, you know, because you know you won't try <laughs> new things, yes. right? And 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 so, um, what what uh, you know, what did you realize also that you liked and or even loved doing that you didn't think that you were going to, or that you learned to like after some time? Well, I think for me, it was actually the systems, the the tech part of it. I was so scared of that part. I mean, it's just crippling fear. But what was so great is, that, like I said, the hand-holding, um, the, the step-by-step walkthroughs that I could pause, go implement, come back. I mean, and it's not just telling you to do something. You're, you're learning why. And that for me is so important. Like, why am I doing this? Why does this link go here? Why does it, what is this function? Um, and that education is here. And so I didn't realize I was actually going to enjoy learning that stuff. Um, creating squeeze pages and, and just getting creative. Even that is a creative process. Copyright. I, I was like, wow, I really like this. This is, this is actually creative as well. And I'm a creative person. And so the things that I think that I was scared were going to be too technical and um, not feed my creative soul are actually places I find my personality can shine through even more. Um, mm. So I was I was pleasantly surprised with like the tech part not being as scary, although it was not easy. Like it wasn't just like, oh my goodness, I know how to do this now. It, it's still, I'm still learning. But um, once it clicks, like you start to see, oh, I could really build off of this. And 
I'm going to now, this is going to sound more and more like me. And I think that's what's so important when you're first getting started is like, it's okay. You're still learning. You're a little bit wobbly. You know, you're still getting your, your footing, but then you're going to get your footing and you're going to start sounding like you and you're going to get more confident and it's okay to be vulnerable. It's okay to be new, you know? Yeah. Oh my gosh, for sure. And that's like really a place that I've, I've embraced. And I think it's been my, like a huge advantage. I say I've got a few superpowers. You know, one of my superpowers is, well, that I've, I've been sober for 15 years. Like that's actually become a superpower because I'm like never drunk, never high, never out of it. Right. I'm always, I'm, I'm never waking up like hung over or anything. I, I can get up, roll out of bed, jump right on, wake up legendary. And, and, and kind of like I did this morning, you know, and um, slept in a little bit. Um, <laughs> that's okay though. Like I didn't, yeah. I didn't drink last night. Like I, I haven't drunk and drank in 15 years. So it's like, I'm, I'm, I'm clear. Another superpower is I've done a lot of therapy and healing work and recovery work. And that's been real helpful for me to be able to connect with people and be able to feel okay and vulnerable telling my story and revealing parts of me. Um, you know, another is that being vulnerable, it, allowing myself to feel vulnerable, learning new things like being new and being uncomfortable, trying things that don't feel comfortable, that being like a play. And as a matter of fact, it's kind of at this point, like if I'm not trying new things and in an uncomfortable position, like I get antsy and I'll, you know, I'll want to do something new or change something up or try something or get uncomfortable because I, I realize that's where I grow, you know, mm -hmm. and, and, and it, I begin to thrive in situations where pressure is applied, where I have mm -hmm. to versus crumble, right? A lot of times we feel, you know, we're afraid of stress and pressure because we think we're going to crumble. Well, what if you could excel during pressure situations? It's possible, but you have, you have to create, it's better for you to create the pressure first than other people, places, or things to create the pressure. So put yourself in difficult situations. What does that mean? Well, might just mean getting in front of the camera. It might just mean, you know, going and following through with everything that you're learning here because it's not going to be easy and that's going to be pressure. One of the things that I think this is a great question that uh, segues kind of right from this exact topic is somebody asked, let me find it here. Uh, where was it? I saw it. Oh, Dora said, what was the one habit you had to break to be intentional about your daily routine? I love this question. Um, I needed to get past not like waking up at five. I need, I was afraid of the five o'clock alarm. I think for me, mornings have always been hard and uh, getting, giving myself an actual routine. I think getting past my own, my own thinking, you know, if I get up and I, I stretch and I say, thank you. That's different than getting up and saying, man, I, I don't want to get up. Like it's all about your mindset. And so I had to break my bad thinking habits. It was more mental than it was physical. I think the physical parts and results come after, but the mental part is what I had to start implementing. And, you know, it is hard. It's not, it's not natural right away, but I will say like two weeks after I started just implementing the schedule for myself, I'm doing it for me. I know that this is going to be beneficial for me and my family eventually. Um, and so waking up at five, giving myself a 15 minute workout, dedicating an hour to my business in the morning, whatever that looks like, creating content, batching videos on the weekend. I mean, I was spending my morning Saturdays just waking up before everyone and still waking up at five so that I can batch content and still be present as a mom. I mean, the beginning, you're, you're getting started and it's not, you know, a walk in the park, you're learning. And so making sure that you go into it with that expectation and creating those, those successful habits that will lead to successful outcomes was what I just had to just start doing it. You just get out of your own way. And that's what I am still doing. <laughs> Yeah. So were, did you say you were a morning person or were not a morning person before? No, I'm, I'm, I'm a happy person in the morning, but I don't like waking up at five. I mean, yeah. I would wake up at probably seven um, to get my day started. And I think 
um, just two hours earlier makes such a big difference for me, at least in my life and my schedule, that this is just what works for me. You got to get to bed though at night if you're doing that, right? Oh yeah, I go to bed early. I, I have a, see now, it, whatever works for you, right? Some people are night owls and then they'll sleep in depending on the work schedule, but I have a full-time job. And like I said, I'm a mom. So what works best for me is waking up before everyone wakes up and just TCOB, take care of business. TCOB. That's what we tell my son. TCOB. I like that. I like that. And I think it's fun to create little, you know, little things that are meaningful just for you or that, you know, little, little things that, you know, make you tick. I, I love that, you know, it's true. We all have to test, I mean, daily routines and finding a uh, a successful method of operation for our daily lives requires testing. And I think that each one of us, just like marketing requires testing, there's not going to be a specific formula. That's why, you know, listening to people's morning routines, listening to what, which is one of the most, you know, popular questions in the success niche, you know, what's your morning routine as in some people go crazy. I mean, you've, especially in the last couple of years, they're up, they're meditating, they're yoga, their workout, they're ice bathing, they're cold Ooh. showering, they're, <laughs> they're reading 15 minutes, they're praying 15 minutes. They're, you know, yeah. they, they eat, take their supplements. I mean, it's like, Holy smokes. I mean, yeah. you know, that's really, really, is that really what you're doing? You know? Yeah. And, and so, you know, it really, it may just be getting up and having, you know, some extra time in the morning to gather your thoughts, some yeah. extra time in the morning to kind of, you know, scroll through uh, social media and get some ideas. I wanted to ask you briefly in yeah. terms of content creation and kind of growing an audience, which is, you know, setting up the tech, setting up your funnel, setting up your systems, setting up that that thing is kind of one piece. And most people spend a lot of time on that and they're like, woohoo. Okay. Got my, got my, got my business set up, you know, okay, <laughs> money. Okay. Money. Come on, baby. Come. Yeah. Come daddy. Come mama, <laughs> right? And it's like, snap, I gotta, I gotta have some people, you know? Yes. So then we learn about audience building in actually creating marketing content. So what is something that you've learned about creating marketing content about building an audience I mean, give us one or two things that stand out to you that if you were to go back to your brand new self and say, hey, put some extra focus on this or this is going to work really well for you. I've got the crystal ball. Like, what would yeah. you go back and give your younger few months back self advice on? Great question. I think um, I'm very lucky because I was such a fan of Wake Up Legendary. And, you know, again, thank you to all of the people who came on the show before me because they gave me the crystal ball. And the crystal ball for me and what I have found has worked in my content creation is value. And I know we say this over and over again, value, 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 but like edutainment, entertain with education. My niche is make money online. So I'm going to find different jobs that are remote that you can do and make money online, you know, and it, it, ones that work, you know, you want to make sure you're giving people real education. Disclaimers are super important. Answer their questions in the comments, but finding these different avenues is a great starting place for when you're growing an audience because yeah they might be like me looking for ways to make money online and yeah maybe they'll try one of the options that you give them like transcribing or being a data analyst for google i mean some of these actually have requirements you might need to have a degree you might actually have to take their course and i explain that in my videos giving people that information and then always at the end i try to tie it up and say well if you don't want to be a transcriber or maybe you're not a data analyst comment ready down below and i'll tell you what my favorite way to make money online is and you don't need a degree for this you can learn it and so kind of having your content flow to where you got a good hook, you know, you, this might surprise you. There's so many different hook ideas out there. Text on screen, I think is important for people and giving them information that's going to help them. Like they can go ahead and apply this and never talk to you again. That is going to help people want to keep watching your content and very first basic thing, trust you. 
Um, so that's what I found right now with where I'm at in my business has been it has been helpful because then it does lead to conversations. Well, I don't really want to be a data analyst. So what are what are you doing? Mm. And then boom, that's when we really start talking and I give them my my free ebook on affiliate marketing and I get to talk about something I'm actually passionate about because I'm doing it. Mm. Um, so that would be what I would suggest anyone. Um, I know not everyone does that, but for me, that's what's been working. And I feel like I'm actually bringing value to my audience, which helps me um, keep going. Yeah. Yeah. And there's a, there's a, I mean, you outline the steps to do that properly. And that's really, um, that was really well said. I think with any topic that you're talking about, giving people a variety of different um, uh, options on your page, your page is, you know, your page is like a news. It's like an, it's like a, it's like a news or a, or a, a quick learning dashboard where they can come through and see a lot of options of little appetizers that they can choose from in taste and see um, if they like, and also find out what you like. Um, it's, it's absolutely fine to expose people to things that you are not pursuing yourself. Um, the, you know, if I was a dog trainer, I would have, I mean, you can only talk about your own, if you do one specific method or one thing, uh, you know, especially if people are Googling or looking up other methods of dog training, you want your content to come up and be there. And you also want to, it's smart to, to point out and talk about those other methods because they probably know about them or have heard about them anyways. And so <coughs> for you to, for you to address them and say, yes, this exists. And, and, and yes, it can be useful in, in these three situations. However, this is my preferred method. This is what I do. And there's there, there's something very ethical about that. There's something very transparent about that. And it goes back to the sort of um, options that we were talking about of giving people when they're when they're coming up in uh, school that, hey, there's a lot of different things that you can do. You know, I mean, imagine if we did that with our youth that we said, hey, you know, high school was just all about exposing them to all the different things that you could do. Right. You could you could you know, we're going to do a year on entrepreneurship. We're going to do a year on art. We're in, in, in theater and dance and performance and acting and singing. We're going to do a year on um, finance, you know, uh, accounting, investing, man. And we're going to do a year on like employment and HR and, and um, you know, climbing the corporate ladder. And, and finding a company to work for and, and, you know, building a career within that company and adding value to that company. What kind of a world would we have? What kind of a country would we have? We would have bright young people who knew what their options were, knew how to balance a checkbook, knew what a 401k was, knew what an index fund was, understood the basics of the stock market, right? Um, man, it's, it's, we would have a, a, a dynamic uh, country. And, and, and I think this is what's great about having profiles that expose people to lots of different options and educate them while also giving them your opinions and your preferences and, and things that you like, things that you've tried. And so I also love what you said about educate or entertaining through education. I, I think that's really well put. And, um, I think I'm going to use that a lot more, Ashley, in the future. So thank you for that. I'm, that's why I like to show up to Wake Up Legendary to learn also, because I might give you something, you give it back to me even better. Um, and that's the beauty of this community and this mastermind is we're always helping each other to be better and to use the principles that we know in more powerful ways. But doesn't edutainment doesn't mean that I have to get on the internet and be a clown or be funny or be a comedian or be an actor or right. It, it just means that I have to present something that's that's entertaining 
And, and one of the most powerful things in the world that's entertaining is actually something that somebody can learn something from, right? And, and you see even my, my, my boomer family members, um, which I love, I have many of them and I'm, I, I love them. Um, they, they might be sitting around at a family function and be on their phones watching the video and be like, damn, I didn't know that and share the video. And it's like, there's no, there's nothing. And of course, young people do it too, but I just, I just, I like hanging out with my older relatives when they have kind of alert. I didn't know that there's nothing more fun and exciting than when somebody learns something new that they didn't know. Right. Mm -hmm. And it's like, to me, I think people come online and that's what they're looking for. They're looking to learn things. They're look, they're not just looking to watch senseless videos. And I think that we we've we may have confused that, or some of you may have confused that that you have to dance, or you have to point and you know be goofy and all this stuff. No, you just have to share ideas. You just have to put things in front of people that they may not have known. Give them a different perspective, right? And they will. They will, that is that is how you will build your audience. That is how people will respect you and look at you as an authority and, and listen to your recommendations. Because if somebody learns something from you one time, one time, they will suddenly view you through a different lens that maybe just maybe they can learn something from you again, and that you have valuable things to share and offer. And so I, I love that you you really clarified that in such a beautiful way, entertaining through education. And it doesn't have to be groundbreaking education, does it, Ashley? It could be simple little things. Yeah. They're not looking for the whole tutorial. I mean, um, giving them just enough to start doing. You want people to be self-efficient as well. You know, you can't be their be-all, end-all um, for things, but inspire them. Inspire them. Educate them. Give them what it is they need to get started. And actually, it's only going to, at least for me, it's only made me more confident in my content creation because I know I'm bringing value. I already know whether I'm in my pajamas, I'm in my robe, and I'm drinking coffee. If I'm talking about something I know is going to help someone, I know that that's value already. And so that, it, to your point, exactly, it, that, that's what they're looking for. Just tell me what I need to know. I don't care about your cool dance moves. Wait, hey, I'll bust out a dance move every once in a while, okay? You got you to gotta spice it up, have some fun, laugh at yourself. But I think uh, my priority right now is just bringing education, information that I know they can use and um, having fun, as much fun as I can being myself. Don't reinvent the wheel. People are doing this. Look at their content and then make it your own because you can deliver the same information without being a robot and just copying someone verbatim. I mean, yes, you. there's a lot of information that is the same information, but how you deliver it is specific to you and the way you want to deliver it. And the more you practice, the more confident you'll get. And at least that's been my experience. Yeah. Well, Shelly says, I think I've gotten so much from this wake up legendary than any of the previous ones I've seen. Wow. You go, you go, you keep coming back. Stop it. I know. Stop it. Stop, Stop it. it. <laughs> All right, my friend. Well, it has been fun. We're at the top of the hour. I, we're two minutes over. I could keep going, um, but we'll we'll end there because let's leave something to be desired for uh, a follow up conversation, and uh, many more in the future. It's been a pleasure. Like this has really been enlightening about how you've uh, taken this into other areas, and um, also just the simple, clear. Uh, advice that you have and experience that you have. It's, it's been really, really impactful and it, it looks really good and it comes out of you really nicely. This has been uh, commented on before uh, I saw as well that you have a, just a, a gentle patient demeanor about yourself. Obviously you're a teacher. Um, so that, that's, that, you know, that's, that's useful in that area. Right. But um you know, it's about embracing who you are, you know, and and um, using the things that you have already inside of you. And uh, I, th I think that, you know, the more that you do this, the more all your gifts are going to shine like they have this morning. So keep up the great work 
and uh, mm-hmm. stay legendary, my friend. I look forward to having you back on the show real soon. Thank you so much, Dave. It's been an honor. I've definitely wanted to do this. It was on my uh, one of my big goals list. So thank you so much, and hopefully I'll see you soon. Oh, thanks. All right. Talk to you soon, Ashley. All right, my friends, you can find Ashley. You can follow Ashley. You can support Ashley and learn from Ashley over at Ashley Affiliates. That's A-S-H-L-E-E, Affiliates, Ashley Affiliates, okay, over on Instagram. Uh, My friends, wow, what a great episode. What a great way to kick off the week. Uh, If you want to kick off or re-kick off, there's nothing wrong with starting over um, or getting started. Sometimes we need to start over every day. It's okay. Um, you can go to legendarymarketer.com forward slash enroll and get started with uh, wherever we'll meet you wherever you're at, okay, um, with one of our our, uh, our courses or programs. You can also text WUL to 813-296-8553. Look at me. Got that memorized, okay? We'll send you a text message reminder to jump on Wake Up Legendary every weekday morning at 10 a.m. Eastern time, okay? Uh, text WUL. Watch. I'll do it. W-U-L to 813-296-8553. Come on. Let's go. See, that's muscle memory, man. I mean, that's, you do something enough, dad gum, and it becomes like second nature. Um, it's also my radio moment, you know, text W-U-L to 813-296-8553. My friends, uh, it has um, been a absolute pleasure. All of you are so supportive and kind. Thank you so much for being here. Hopefully Ashley can go back and (laughs) Adelita says have a blessed tax day. It is tax day, isn't it? Um, Thank you so much for, yes, uh, run this on replay for sure. This was a really inspiring one. This was a great one. They just keep getting better. They're all, they're so awesome. You all are so awesome. I mean, it's just an absolute pleasure to do these with you, for you, and uh, be with you here for an hour to start off my day. These are live for anybody who's wondering. As you can see, it's April 15th at 11.06 a.m., okay? So we're live. I'm, I'm right here. We're live. Uh, and yes, you can re-watch on YouTube. You can re-watch right here on the Facebook page. You can also, we take the audios and we upload them onto all the major podcast platforms. So you can actually go on to the major podcast platforms, type in Wake Up Legendary, and it will come up same day. We, we usually get the audios up same day so you can listen to them uh, you know, in your car or just on your phone with earphones uh, or ear pods or whatever you use. And so, my friends, with that being said, get out of here. Have a fantastic, legendary day. We'll see you back here tomorrow for another episode. As always, get out of here. Be great. Be blessed. Peace.